guys. Thank you so much for coming. Just an overview of why I wanted to convene this meeting. Uh, in order to qualify for 501c3 benefits from the federal government, we need to establish a set of beliefs and practices and bylaws. Now at the same time, we want to keep in mind we are a non-denominational church. Um, let me chime in right there, Bill. Do we really want to use the title church? I mean, that's so overused. There's Grace Lutheran Church. There's First Baptist Church. Mmm, I see your point. Because there's even the Churches of Christ and the Church of the Brethren. Mm -hmm. It just reeks of denominationalism and old, worn-out terms. Gus brings up a good point. Let's not go with the title church. Let's go with the title Fellowship. Uh, Pleasant Grove Bible Fellowship? Mm -hmm. Or a gathering of believers? A gathiver. A blathering. A blathering! Yes, a blathering. Okay then, a blathering. We'll just change church to blathering. Okay, now the first practical step on the agenda today. Baptism. What do we want to do about baptism? We got to do it because it's in the Bible, but how exactly do we want to go about this? Well, we could just have something like a tub up front and new believers make a public declaration there. Yeah, that's really Baptist, though, Gus. Really Baptist. No, not if the tub has a diving board. Oh, now that's different. But there's still a tub. I'm seeing Vineyard Assembly of God written all over that. Total Vineyard AG. A diving board, but not a tub. A swimming pool. Mass baptisms. Like every week. I was thinking more like a dunk tank. You know, get the kids involved. Have have the kids dunk sister or, or dunk dad. <laughs> ah, making baptisms fun for the whole family. Okay, I'll look into the dunk tank thing. I have a feeling that the swimming pool, while it's a great idea, maybe we're not at that phase in growth yet. So potentially with some church growth. Belathering. With belathering growth. Right. Thank you. It could be something that we consider in the future. Now, related to this, who exactly gets baptized? Just to be on the safe side, why not just baptize as soon as possible? What? You mean like infant baptisms? Catholic, Lutheran, Presbyterian, Methodist? Right. Then we baptize adults. What, like Baptists, Calvary Chapels, Assemblies of God, Christian Missionary Alliance? Okay, we just don't baptize. Like the Quakers? Fine. We baptize the dead. Mormons. No, 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 no. Then what can we do? We might just have to bend on this one. No, no, no. There will be no bending. Some groups baptize infants, right? Right. right. Some groups baptize adults, right? right? Right. Right. But who, I ask of you, baptizes the elderly? There it is. Say 75 plus. You're born before 1945, you're good to go. Okay, I like our progress. So we've got baptizing the elderly in a dunk tank. I think that's really going to help our name get out there in the community. So this is good, this is good. It's going to be a relevant and very groundbreaking kind of movement. Okay, another item on the agenda is going to be communion. Uh, again, it's clearly a biblical practice, so we want to participate in it. But it seems like everybody has their way of doing this, yeah? 
So how do we take a different kind of approach? How do we stand out from the rest? Hey, I know, I know. Instead of wine, we use grape juice. Gus, everyone is doing that. Well, if everyone's doing that, then we just go back to using wine. Presbyterians, Lutherans. I thought everyone was using grape juice. What if we just use water? Lame. Plus, it's been done. Okay, okay, hear me out, hear me out. There's bound to be nobody using actual blood. Catholics say they do. And some Lutherans and goth groups. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Not blood. Not juice or wine. That's used all the time. We use V8. Vegetable juice. Bingo! Gus nailed it. Gah! Of course. Wonderful. Vegetable juice for the communion wine. I like it. Okay, Dave, can you do a quick Google search? Make sure nobody else is doing that. Okay, next thing, it gets a little tricky maybe with the bread. What do we want to do about that? Well, we can't just use bread like the Methodists or the Eastern Orthodox. Yeah, can't use wafers like the Lutherans. Can't use crackers like the Church of Christ. We can't even combine them into an individual convenient unit like Calvary Chapel. Guys, I think we can be even more biblical than the others. Okay, what does the bread commemorate? The body of Christ. Which commemorates him calling himself the bread of life. Right. And where else did Israel feast on miraculous bread? Oh, the bread of life is the manna stuff that was on the ground for the wandering Israelites. This miraculous sustenance from heaven. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see where this is going. So all we gotta do is load our HVAC system with flour, and then when communion time comes, ba blast Down comes the manna, right? just like in the wilderness. Hmm, I like it. Can the youth group maybe use a flour cannon? Seems real relevant and exciting. A youth group? Everyone. I mean, everyone does a youth group. Sure, no, you're right. Uh, maybe for our left-handed men's group. Oh, that reminds me, Bill. What groups are meeting this week? Okay, the aforementioned left-handed men's group. That is bi-weekly, so they'll meet next week. Let's see, the high school dropout group meets... Uh, well, I think they stopped meeting for the time being. Uh, the procrastinators group... Uh, Oh, they meet every day. That's ironic. Mops, right? the mothers of professional sculptors, they meet for two consecutive days every three weeks. And the Bible Bowl, that's our, our outreach to, to addicts, uh, marijuana users, they meet, well, they kind of have a sporadic schedule. So there's no youth group. Well, there is P Fuego. That's a Party of Flames Unite Energy Global Outreach. We're just really careful not to call it a youth group. Too churchy. Hey, so I was Googling the vegetable juice thing, and we're good there. But, you know St. Mark's Episcopal up the street? Mm -hmm, yeah. Sure. Yeah, well, they just went non-denominational. What? Yeah. Well then we can't just be non-denominational. We've got to be ultra non-denominational. Um, actually, guys, they saw that we were already going non-denominational, so they went ultra non-denominational. What? Oh, they think they're so unique. Well, we'll show them. We'll go mega ultra non-denominational. Supreme Extra Mega Ultra Non-Denominational. You see, this is exactly why I like meeting with you guys. Process and progress. With ideas like this, I think we're ready to make that next step of church growth.
belathering. <laughs>